I would just say this, much of what we heard from a handful of senators yesterday uh, has to be put in context. The overwhelming majority of senators on both sides, I thought were answer, asking appropriate questions and positive in their approach and respectful of the uh, nominee before us. But for many of senators, <clears throat> yesterday was an opportunity <clears throat> to showcase talking points for the November election. Mr. Chairman, um, I think you've, um, in the main, provided both sides an opportunity to be heard and ask their questions. But unfortunately, I noticed that after every series of questioning on this side of the aisle, you choose to editorialize and contradict the points being made by this side of the aisle. I don't know whether we will have an equal opportunity to editorialize. It's called chairman's time. It is a tradition in this committee exercised by Senator Lindsey Graham as chairman and Senator Grassley in previous Supreme but, Court. But and they didn't do it the way you do it. I'm going to allow you to be heard, but I want to be heard in, of course. without interruption. Of course. And so in the minority, we waited through chairman's time when we had Republican chairs. There will not be a separate set of rules for Democrats in control of this committee. I want to compliment the Democrats on this committee for using grace and dignity, unlike uh, it was during the Kavanaugh hearings. Thank you all very much for making this. I've heard a lot of compliments about how this is a way a hearing ought to be held. You said the obvious increased risk of harm that the COVID-19 pandemic poses to individuals who have been detained in the districts, that's the District of Columbia's correctional facilities, reasonably suggests that each and every, and I think that means everyone, every defendant who is currently in the D.C. De uh, Department of Corrections custody and who thus cannot take independent measures to control their own hygiene and distance themselves from others should be released. Do I read that statement to say that you felt, given the circumstances of the time, they should all be released? Because that's broad. That's not looking at their individual cases. No, Senator, you don't read it correctly. Okay. How can I not read this to say that perhaps they should be released irrespective of the, the crime for which they've been charged? Senator, if you read two more sentences down, that is precisely what I focus on. This is a case, United States versus Wiggins, where I was uh, setting up my analysis as to why I would not be releasing Mr. Wiggins in this case. Congress has indicated that we have to take each case individually. We have to look at the harm to the community that might be caused by the release of individual people. We can't just release everybody, I said in that okay. opinion. And so- I, I wanted to give you, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm on, all right. on four minutes. Now, didn't you also say that the number of images should not be considered as a sentence enhancement? Senator, with respect to the computer, one of the most effective deterrents is one that I imposed in every case and that judges across the country impose in every case, which is substantial substantial supervision any You're, of these wait, wait, defendants wait a minute, judge. you think it is a bigger deterrent to take somebody who's on a computer looking at sexual images of children in the most disgusting way is to supervise their computer habits versus putting them in jail no senator i didn't say versus That's exactly what you said i think the best way to deter people from getting on a computer and viewing thousands and hundreds and over time maybe millions the population as a whole of children being exploited and abused every time somebody clicks on is to put their ass in jail not supervise their computer usage senator i'm not saying it's more or That's less exactly what you're saying what? The, the the sentencing scheme doesn't place everybody at the same level the the point of judging and the guidelines is to look at what has happened in a case, compare defendants to each other in terms of what they've done, and give proportional pen penalties based- Mr. Chairman, this is non- she, she has said, Mr. Chairman, she does not use sentence enhancements in the area of somebody using a computer for everybody. Can, can I explain why, sir? I'm, I'm gonna give her, the witness an opportunity to respond to you, Senator. Finally. At Why? the time 
that the guidelines were created for child pornography. This crime was primarily being committed by people who were literally mailing one, two, five, ten, a hundred photos at a time. How's it being committed now? Would she please have her complete her answer? Go ahead. So in a world in which the mail is used for the purpose of distribution, it really matters whether the person has distributed one or five or a thousand. And so the guideline says, you know what? We are going to treat a person who's distributed a thousand a lot worse because that shows that this person is really engaged in this really horrible behavior. In comes the internet. On the internet, with one click, you can receive, you can distribute tens of thousands. You can be doing this for 15 minutes, and all of a sudden, you are looking at 30, 40, 50 years in prison. Good. Cut. Good. I understand. Absolutely Senator, good. I hope you are. To do good. Allow her to finish, please. I hope you go to jail for 50 years if you're on the internet trolling for images please. of children and sexual exploitation. So, so you don't think that's a bad thing? I think that's a that horrible thing. That's not what the witness said, and she should be allowed to answer this question once and for all. Senator. Senator, all I'm trying to explain is that our sentencing system, the, the system that Congress has created, the system that the Sentencing Commission is the steward of is a rational one. It's a system that is designed to help judges do justice in these terrible circumstances by eliminating unwarranted disparities, by ensuring that the most serious defendants get the longest periods of time. And when modes of commission of the crime change such that in two seconds, someone can receive or distribute thousands of images. That's no longer a, and this is what the commission found in their studies, an indicator of a person who, relative to other people, has committed this crime in a more aggravated way. The sentencing guidelines by statute require you to have similarly situated defendants sentenced to similar sentences, but you don't sentence Chazen to 84 to 92 months. You sentenced him to 28 months. Why? Senator, I've said what I'm going to say about these cases. No one case can stand in for a judge's entire record. OK, but I'm discussing and every one I, of your cases. So, so if, if you're not going to explain it. Senator, gonna... would you please let her respond? No, not if she's not going to answer well, my question. Well, if you're just going to give a speech, then uh, and, you shouldn't and, engage and, in and questioning. And you, you are not taking my time. If you want to filibuster, you're, you're welcome to do so, but do I it on your own I would at least time. give you an opportunity to speak, and you should give her an opportunity to respond. If she wants to answer the question, I asked her why please she Please allow sentenced... her to answer the I question. I asked her why she sentenced Chazen to 28 months when comparable defendants so in her own words answer. were sentenced to substantially higher and she said she's not going to answer did you ha i mean i, I would I, welcome I your I answer please. senator please. i didn't say i'm not going to answer okay well, i then said my tell answer us in this facts in this case chazen why did you sentence him to just 28 months senator you're looking at the record i don't have the record here what i will say is that in every case i looked at the recommendations of not only the government but also the probation office the defendant, the record, the evidence, I took into account the seriousness of the offense. And by, I by the way, you ruled. know, one of the striking things in Chazen, what did you sentence Stewart for? The guidelines said 97, 121 months. Prosecutor said 97 months. You said it's egregious, 6,700 images. You come in with 57 Time months. Time has expired. Why Senators did you two sentence minutes him to over just the 57 months in the Stewart case? Do you want to address that? Because you're claiming it's cherry picking. In fact, you're welcome to explain any of these cases, but let's take the Stewart case. Why Senator Coons, did you sentence him for half the amount? You're not recognized, Senator, Senator you, Coons. You don't want her to answer that question? You wouldn't allow her any. Mr. Chairman, she may answer the question. I've asked her why she sentenced Stewart. You've gone over the time, Senator, by two minutes Why she? And a half. Because you've interrupted me for two minutes, Mr. Chairman. Will you allow her to answer the question, or do you not want the American people to hear <laughs> why, with someone she described as well, an egregious... You know, there comes a point, Senator, where you get a little bit... Chairman Durbin, hand. will you allow her to answer the question? You won't allow her to answer I, the I, I will happily allow her to... The question is Senator why you, Thank you sentenced Stewart, an egregious child pornography possessor... So, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Senator Hirono. Uh, Mr. Chairman. M Mr. Chairman. Senator Hirono's turn. Uh, Mr. Thank chairman, you, Mr. I'm chairman, I'm asking you to be recognized to make, make a point to the chairman. No, uh, Mr. Chairman. I believe he uh, recognized me. May I proceed? Mr. 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 Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I waited my turn on here, and I've been on this committee for 40 seven years. I, I think we ought to follow the regular order. Mr. Mr. Chairman, the witness just said that we cannot understand those I'm cases sorry, without Senator, the pre-sentence report. I don't report. want to go through this again. I have a letter that I want to enter there into the record that's the signed by that 10 senators followed. on this committee. Are, do you, do you, are you not even going to allow a letter from 10 senators you on this committee? Send any letter, you can do it the, the, This letter that email. is signed by 10 senators on the committee addressed to you makes the point that the White House gave you probation information for Democrats that was not provided to the minority on this committee. And just now, Judge Jackson told Senator Hawley, you cannot understand these cases without reading the probation reports. Ten senators on this committee are asking the chairman, Mr. chairman. to provide those reports so we can do what Judge Jackson Mr. just chairman, said, I, which is I, I to assess the, those reports. And Mr. here is chairman, the letter. I, I, know I the ask unanimous I know the consent to be admitted senator, to the record. I know the junior senator from Texas I used to get on television. But most of us have been here a long time trying to follow the rules. Uh, and he could very easily hand you a letter to go in the record. He's saying he's doing this to help uh, Senator Hawley. Senator Hawley could have put it in, and he didn't. Yeah. But let's get back to regular order. Senator Hawley didn't sense. write the letter. Mr. Let's Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that it be admitted to the record. Senator Rono. Are, Thank are, you. Are you denying consent? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just look at you, and I, I start getting full of emotion. I'm jogging this morning, and I'm at the end of the block I live on, and I get terrified because I put my music on loud when I'm jogging, <laughs> trying to block out the noise of the, of the heart attack I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> and this woman comes up on me, Matt practically tackles me, an African-American woman, and the look on her eyes, she just wanted to touch me, because I think, because I'm sitting so close to you, and tell me what it meant to her to watch you sitting where you're sitting. And you did not get there because of some left-wing agenda? You didn't get here because of some dark money groups? You got here how every black woman in America who's gotten anywhere has done. By being <laughs> like Ginger Rogers said, I did everything Fred Astaire did, but backwards in heels. And, and so I, I'm just sitting here saying, nobody's stealing my joy. Nobody's going to make me angry, especially not people that are called in a conservative magazine demagogic for what they're bringing up that just doesn't hold water. I'm not going to let my joy be stolen. I hope to inspire people to try to follow um, this path because I love this country. because I love the law. <laughs> because I think it is important that we all invest in our future. And the young people are the future. And so I want them to know that they can do and be anything and I'll just say that um, I will tell them what uh, an anonymous person said to me once. I was walking through Harvard Yard my freshman year. I think the first semester I was really homesick. I was really questioning, um, do I belong here? Can I, can I make it in this? environment and I was walking through the yard in the evening and a black woman I did not know was passing me on the sidewalk and she looked at me and I guess she knew how I was feeling and she leaned over as we crossed and said persevere I would tell them to persevere. <laughs>